Happy Friday, folks. Brad coming at you here with uh, three cards to show, along with a little football talk that happened last week. I didn't get off till today, so I couldn't make a video till today. But, uh, let's see, we'll just start with the Thursday night game. That was enjoyable. <laughs> last Thursday night. We're not talking about the one yesterday, which, yeah. But, few notables was with Alex Smith and Sam Bradford throwing the ball down the field. I was like, what is this? <laughs> but with Alex Smith and Sam Bradford actually like throwing the ball vertically, I was I was shocked in completing it. But uh, Patriots, you know the guy they missed the most on Thursday night it was a guy who retired, Rob Ninkovich. That's right. I have never seen a Patriot team the last about 10 years not be able to set the edge in the running game. I mean, just, it was nuts. Like, Kareem Holmes was just constantly right to the outside. Or they didn't set the edge at all. Like, I've never seen a Patriot team not do that. Not for an entire game. Like, you know, if they don't do it the one drive, oh, they got that fixed. The whole game, they didn't set the edge in the running game. It was just insane. Um, let's see. Uh, they obviously miss Edelman, especially on like third downs and stuff. But all in all, um, yeah, the notables: Chiefs actually threw the ball down the field. Kareem Hunt always made the first guy miss. I think there was only two times the whole time he touched the ball that the first guy tackled him, and that's the sign of a good running back. Is do you make the first guy miss? And he did that. And the Patriots didn't set the edge in the running game. That's really what I took from it. Other than that, don't blow it out of proportion. The Chiefs are always a good regular season team. They've done this to the Pats before three years ago. So, you know, be excited. Don't get too overhyped, though. Pump the brakes a little bit. But... Um, yeah, not a whole lot else to say about that game, you know. But, yeah, that's pretty much what happened. Those are the three main things. Um, what else? Oh, we'll go to the Super Bowl losers, the Falcons, who really should have lost the game to the Bears. Didn't think I'd be saying that. Two things that stood out in that game. For some reason, the Falcons said... Oh, hey, Bears, your front seven's decent, right? They've got an NFL front seven. The back half definitely needs work. So we're not going to attack the back half. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, the two drives they scored, they threw the ball down the field. Like, I don't know what they were doing, first of all. So the game plan just sucked. I don't know what they were doing. Like, the Bears could be stretched vertically. That's how you get them. And there are going to be nothing they can do about it all year. It's just going to be the way it is. But the team didn't do that. And like I said, the couple times they did do it, they scored touchdowns. But it was a weird game plan. Second thing, Akeem Hicks, def defensive end, defensive tackle for the Bears, whatever you want to call him, for two and a half quarters was by far the best player I've seen on Sunday. And I'm not just talking in that game. I'm talking on Sunday for the first two and a half quarters. He was the best football player I seen on Sunday. That guy was monstrous. Whether it was rushing the passer, whether it was just like flicking a lineman over and tackling the running back, he was dominating for two and a half quarters. But he got gassed and never got it back again. So the last quarter and a half, he was worthless. He was gassed. So... <laughs> But for two and a half quarters, he was the best player I've seen on Sunday. Um, other notable, little Tariq Cohen running around out there. You could tell the Falcons weren't ready for that because we're like, hey, it's Tariq Cohen. We heard about you. You're like a little shifty guy. So he's probably going to be used a lot in the passing game because guess how many wide receivers the Bears have of NFL quality? Maybe one. Maybe. So here's my idea for the Bears. 
most teams this day and age are built to play nickel defense. That's really your main defense. Now, everybody's like, oh, we play a 3-4 or 4-3. In today's NFL, your base defense is basically a nickel defense, right? So a lot of teams, they don't usually have two def big defensive tackles. They usually have one big one, one pass rusher, and the other two outside guys are a lot of times pass rushers. So my thought is the Bears need, because what they do have are tight ends. They have Miller, Sims, Shaheen. They need to run three tight end, one wide receiver sets, and then either Cohen or Howard in the backfield. That's what they need to start doing. That is my brilliant idea for them. Because it keeps teams in the, you know, your 4-3 or 3-4 defense, that even though they say that's the base defense, like I said, most teams are nickel defenses. Most teams don't have three good linebackers. You know, they aren't like the Panthers. They have three good linebackers. Most teams, like I said, only have one run-stuffing defensive tackle, not two. So my thought process is you keep them in that defense with your three tight ends and one wide receiver, it's still your best receiving team and your best blocking one. I think that's the only way the Bears are going to move the ball. I think that's what they need to do. Three tight end, one wide receiver sets. That's my idea for the Bears. All right, next. Um, ah, the Eagles Redskins. It's funny, man. The Eagles are like the all-time momentum team. Man, when stuff is going right, they look dominant. You're just like, wow, this team's awesome. It happened in the beginning of last year, too. You're just like, man, you know, that defensive line's getting after you. You know, Carson Wentz is throwing the ball deep. It's just looking good. They look fast. And then the next quarter, you're like, you can't get near the passer. You can't cover anyone in the secondary. <laughs> Your quarterback's turning the ball over. They are like Mr. Jekyll and Hyde. I just, I can't figure them out. But, uh, yeah, if they could find some consistency, man. Because, like I said, that defensive line can get after you, but it's like they take quarters off. It's like one quarter, they're unblockable. The next quarter, nowhere to be seen, you know. But uh, anybody else think that wasn't a fumble at the end with Kirk Cousins? I'm still confused by that. I've looked at it ten times, and I'm trying to figure out how that's not an incomplete pass. So somebody help me. Because I still don't get it. I don't think it really would have mattered because the way they were playing, they weren't going to go down and score anyways. But I'm just confused. Like, the ball was like, there, so his arm was going forward, but it wasn't completely empty yet. So it wasn't like an empty hand thing. I'm just confused how it wasn't an incomplete pass. Let me know if you actually thought it was a fumble and not being a homer. Because am I just missing something? That seemed like an obvious incomplete pass to me at the end of the game with Kirk Cousins. But Eagles win, like I said, they have some talent, but just Jekyll and Hyde, man. Just quarter by quarter, you never know what you're going to get. Um... Other impressive win, Oakland going in Tennessee, beating the Titans. Marshawn Lynch looked a little better than I thought he would, to be honest with you. I thought he'd be one of those that looked the best, like in the middle of the year after he played some. He actually looked like he still had some quickness. Some, you know, not quite beast mode, you know. Let's not get, he wasn't plowing over people, but he actually had, seemed to have pretty good quickness. Um... Yeah, the defense of the Raiders played better than I thought. Titans only scored 16 points, so. Um, I said, you know, we'll wait and see on the Titans. Losing to the Raiders is no big deal. A lot of teams are going to lose to the Raiders. So, yeah, we'll see how they bounce back this week. Um, not a whole lot, really, from that game, though. Like I said, it's just the Raiders played better defense than I thought because the Titans didn't really run the ball well, which surprised me. Um, and they threw the ball just too damn much. He had, like, over 40 pass attempts, which if Mariota's having over 40 pass attempts, Titans are probably going to lose 75% of the time. But uh, let's see, what else do we have? 
Um, Sunday Night Football. Hmm. Texans, Bengals, and Giants win for ugliest performances from Sunday. That's for sure. Like, just yuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. I thought I was watching a college game. That's how bad it was. That's why I have trouble watching a lot of college football because it just makes me, my eyes bleed a lot. You know, like a lot. I love the one where the quarterback's headed out of bounds. This is like a little tangent. Headed out of bounds. They're going to lose two yards if they step out of bounds. They're scrambling, right? Like, let's say out to the right. And they run out of bounds instead of just throwing the ball away when they're on the sideline. And they lose two yards for a sack. Happens in college all the time. Freaking drives me nuts. Just drive like stuff like that just drives me nuts. And special teams in college is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. So, while I still enjoy football, and I like to watch some of college, I have trouble sitting there all day watching college football. I just can't do it. I mean, uh, my eyes bleed. You know, like, there's a couple NFL games a week that are just kind of like, ugh. But college, it's every one of them. Even when you watch the good teams, it's like, ugh. I just can't do it. But, anyways, off on the tangent. But, yeah, those three teams looked awful. Bengals, Giants, Texans. Just, just plain awful. Uh, Saxonville, again, that's another thing, don't get too hyped, but they have spent a lot of first round picks, a lot of money on the defense, it should be damn good, it's about damn time, but yeah, we'll see, I'm interested to see them play a few more games, I still think that offense is going to have trouble, they lost Allen Robinson for the year, but uh, yeah. There you go. So takeaways, a lot of good rookie performances. A lot of good rookies showed out. Hunt, Cohen, Corey Davis played pretty well. Um, T.J. Watt on defense played well. Um, I know I'm missing people. Who else played well? Dalvin Cook played well. McCaffrey, they just force-fed him, like, ways to get him the ball, but he didn't really do much of anything. It was not really impressive. Um, where are they? I know I'm missing some rookie, but good rookie performances. I'd say overall a successful week one for the rookies. But there you go. That's all I got. Talking-wise, get to the three cards. <clears throat> I bought a couple uh, mystery boxes from Bob Wilkie, K-16. He still has some left, I think. Definitely hit him up. Got a lot of, like, early, mid-2000 patch cards that are really nice. A lot of the same range, like, autographs, late 90s, or two, and autographs of guys. Like, stuff that was hard to hit. He's got a lot of that stuff in there. Very enjoyable. He did a great job with them. They're only 50 bucks. You're going to guarantee that value back. So, definitely highly recommended. And he threw in this, which is just badass. A 2011 totally certified nasty patch card of Larry Zonka. He just threw that into my mystery boxes. So, Bob, I really appreciate that, man, because that is nasty. He knows I love nice patches. Ooh, that's pretty. Nice chunk. So, thanks again, Bob. That was awesome. And like I said, you did a good job with those mystery boxes, too. And then my other purchase, this was actually part of a 2 for 32 on Facebook that they do in the Facebook group, Everett Wenzel. Um, I'm not showing the other card because that's headed somewhere else. But 24 of 25 from 15 tops definitive. The J-Train Rookie Autograph, and it's the green version, which I th thought you know makes it look even better with the Dolphins colors. So, as soon as I saw that popped up, I'm like, oh, sold, that is mine. I just really wanted this card, but there was also another decent card in there, too. So, thank you, Everett. Fast shipping and stuff, as always, sir. I'm just glad this isn't getting contaminated in your house anymore. Love you, Everett. And then last, but not least here, I made a purchase 
True Insanity 67, Michael, he hit me up and he opened up a 2017 Don Russ football box, which I told you all was a sneaky good product with a lot of good vet autos in it. And <laughs> he hit this bad boy and he said, uh, you know, obviously I'd rather sell it to you if you want it than somebody on eBay. So we worked out a price and I've always said with sticker autos, it's all about how you do it. There are some cards with a sticker auto, it looks awful. You're like, ugh, that's a sticker. This one, I feel like it blends in nicely, so it works. And I love this design. So it's a Gridiron Kings, number three out of five autograph of Dan Marino. Gorgeous card. And you see what I mean? Like, I don't, you don't look at that and go, ugh, sticker, you know. It blends in nicely. The photography, you know, the painting on it, awesome. Just gorgeous card, short printed 305. Congrats, Michael, on this hit. That's freaking awesome. I've only seen one other Marino pulled out of it. So, very sick, clean autograph. All on the sticker, which is important as well, and low numbered. So I was like, heck yeah. And thanks for, you gave me a pretty good price on that too, which I appreciate. So, yeah, I was pretty pumped about that. Like I said, I don't like go after a bunch of sticker autos normally, but that one works. I think that one works. So I highly recommend Gridiron Kings. Autographs. Go check them out. Out of 2017 Donruss. Bam. So there's my pickups. A little football talk. Dolphins finally get underway, hopefully this week, against the Chargers. I would be lying to you if I had any idea what the hell to expect. Because I really don't. Like I said, I have a feeling. Because we're not going to play a home game in Miami until October 8th. We're going to be on the road till then, including a trip to London that we have to waste a home game on. This season could be an either an absolute disaster or they all come together and make it successful. I'm not sure which one it's going to be. I really have no idea. So I, I, am, I am really intrigued by this week to see how they come out and play, you know, a good Chargers team. A Chargers team that finds ways to lose but has a lot of talent on it. So, hopefully they find a way to lose again. But, yeah, so I'm really interested to see how they play because I do not have a good feel for it at all. I don't. I have a feeling it could be an absolute disaster or a very pleasant surprise. I'm not sure which way it's going to go. But uh, that's all I got. There was a lot of other games I wanted to get to. This video is long enough. You watch the Packers Seahawks game. Everyone watched that. That's why I didn't talk about it. You know, you all watch that stuff. So that's all I got. Bye bye. Love you all.